Well, Vince, welcome to the broadcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank you for coming to my home. Tell me about yourself. I've heard so many great things about you, but for those who don't know your story, give me the brief synopsis. I was born on a cotton plantation in uh, Haywood County, Tennessee. My father uh, made his money in insurance, got us out of poverty, went to high school in Haywood County, went to the University of Memphis, worked in the prison system for about five years and got to the nonprofit arena, got involved in politics, and uh, then I decided I needed to write a book about everything I'd learned. We sung in a singing group, gospel group called the Ellison Family for, oh, up until I was about 26 years old, we went to hundreds of, of black churches around the South, <laughs> and that's where I got my religion, so. Okay, okay. What was, went into the thought process to uh, get you to start thinking about pinning the book, writing? I started working in prison in 1990. And I, that was during the time that the Clinton uh, prison bill came through and they started locking up black men. And I saw so many of them my age going to jail and I thought the civil rights movement was supposed to change all that. And I saw that we were going backward. And so I started asking the question, what happened, what went wrong? And I saw that uh, we were being victims of the system. Young black men had fallen victim to a terrible, terrible system and it was being run, after I found out, by the Iron Triangle. They were funneling the black vote to the Democrat Party, and they did not care what happened to the black community in the process. And that's why I call the book The Iron Triangle. The Iron Triangle consists of most, not all, most black preachers, most black politicians, and most black civic organizers. And right now, if you watch their politics, you will see they're not pivoting at all. They're doubling down on failure. And all they want is the black vote to give to their white liberal masters, and that's all they're concerned about. Mm -hmm. So tell me more about the book. When people purchase the book and obtain it, what will they learn? Details about the book itself. First thing they will learn is that the Civil Rights Movement wasn't what they thought it was. Uh, the book starts out with a statement from Lyndon Baines Johnson. He said, I'll have those N-words voting Democrat for the next 200 years. That was his motivation behind the Civil Rights Movement. I was at the Lorraine Motel in Memphis, Tennessee at the museum. And uh, while I was there, I heard Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. giving his I Have a Dream speech. Mm -hmm. I'd heard this speech a hundred times. But this time I heard it in another context because this was the time that Kaepernick and the rest of the guys were all kneeling. And I was wondering, wow, these guys are so upset. What were, they, what were they mad about? America, right? And I heard King say something he had said a hundred times, but this time I heard it different. He said, 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation, the Negro is still not free. And I said, wow, that's the poison pill. These young people believe they're not free. But I was born free. <laughs> My unalienable right is a right to freedom. He said that we come to government to ask for these unalienable rights. Our unalienable rights come from God. They don't come from government. Black people were on an upward trajectory up until that time, and then we flatlined and we started going backwards. We didn't have people in prison. We had poverty, but we didn't have prison. We had poverty, but we didn't have families breaking up. The only thing that we got out of the Civil Rights Movement was were more liberal black politicians. They failed at immigration. They failed at better schools. They failed at better families. They failed at better income. They failed at everything except liberal politicians because that's all it's about. So this book tells us how the Iron Triangle hooked up with the Democratic Party to get the black vote and how then they reflected and started telling everybody that our problem was white Republican conservatives. Now, most black people in the ghetto will see a leprechaun before they see a white Republican conservative. They see them on television. But in their immediate circle, city council, congressman, mayor, police, school board, they're all black Democrats. And they run every drug corner, every ghetto school, every flop house in the area. So what we have to do, we have to come together as brothers and sisters, black and white. They get their power from keeping us divided. Black Christians and white Christians are divided and fighting over foolishness, fighting over Confederate monuments, fighting over flags. And while we're divided, the liberals are taking over this country and they're destroying this country and they're using America to, to press their liberal theology all over the world. That's what this book talks about. It talks about how we can come together again as Christians, black and white, and fight this. Because right now they're making fools out of all of us. 
The Iron Triangle is that I missed, and they're the real traitors. So they'll tell us, hey man, you gotta worry about the Republicans, the Republicans, the Republicans. Now, I'm not a Republican, so I'm not apologizing for them. I'm saying that right now, these people have no plan, except for one, give me your vote. Give me your vote. Schools are terrible. We talk about school choice, because it's a Republican plan, they don't want it. We talk about welfare reform, they don't want it. We talk about plans to bring the family together, stop abortion. Right now, the Democrats are saying that they want abortion up to the time of birth, federally funded, and they've killed, since 1972, they've killed over 30 million black babies, yet they say they're our friends. This book tells you about the whole plan. It tells you what we have to do to stop it. It also tells us that the real traitors are in our midst, and they are not the people that they say are the traitors. And we have to wake up, because until we learn who's killing us, we can't stop the killing, and it's not who they say it is. Mm. What would you say to critics of your point of view and even of the book who talk about uh, the Republican Party not being inclusive and open to uh, people of color? I would tell them that we have to start blaming and start getting involved. When we see, it's like if you go to a store and you find out this store is giving you bad food and treating you badly and giving you bad service. You don't just keep going. You find a better store, and you then go in and make yourself known. The Republican Party will not keep anybody out that wants to come and join it. They tell us that they don't want us. I'm telling them, don't listen to that. You're an American. You're a free man. I've read a lot of self-help books, and I'm sure you have too. I've never seen one that said victimization was good. <laughs> I've never seen one that said that you should blame somebody else for your problems. They always say that's suicidal. Yet when you look at the left, that's all you find. Somebody else's fault. You had nothing to do with it, blame somebody else. That is why we're at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America. The leadership of black America is the leadership of failure right now. Now, we don't need to leave the Democratic Party. You need to change leadership. It's a suicidal death cult. And right now, us as black people are dying in this oasis called America. Why? Because we're following death politics. Abortion, euthanasia, uh, uh, terrible schools, uh, legalization of drugs, you name it. They're trying to pass it, and they're going to push it into the black community. And the most amazing thing about it all is when I hear them talk about taking guns, that really blows my mind. Because I grew up in the South, and the one thing they never wanted a black man to have was a gun. Because then you could keep them from bothering him. When I see black men giving up their right, their unable more right to defend themselves. When I see black politicians telling them to give up, they're right. They're telling them police are trying to kill you. They're trying to tell you gangs are trying to kill you. They're trying to tell you that Trump is a racist, which I don't believe he is. And then they tell you, but give them your gun. Let these people control your lives. It's ridiculous. Liberalism is insanity. And if we're not very, very careful, look at the ghettos of black America, and they're going to make the whole nation exactly like that. We want to bring people up, not bring them down. This book tells us that we need to reconcile. We need to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we need to stand up as a people and push these people out before they kill us all. You've tuned in to Conversations, our television broadcast. I'm Andre Whitehead. Happy holidays and James. thanks for joining us. Mr. Vince Ellison will be right back with us after these very important messages. Stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I'm Misty Harrison, I'm 23 years old, I'm in the Air Force, and I came to Jefferson College to become a nurse. I was attracted to Jefferson College because of the clinical experience, the small class sizes, and the one-on-one -on -one instruction that I received from my professors. In the Air Force, we focus on three core values, integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all that we do. My experience here at Jefferson College will help impact the lives of my family and my community. Be next. What kind of response have you received from the book, from uh, both sides, if you will? What are uh, non-African Americans telling mm -hmm. you about the book, non-Christians, if mm -hmm. you will? What are people of color, and maybe even the Democratic Party, saying right. about the book? I've had nothing but favorable responses about this book. Why? Because it deals with fact. I'm not telling black people that there's anything wrong with us. It's the leadership. When you have an African American minister, that is supposed to be a Baptist or Methodist, 
And his discipline says a specific thing. Yet he supports a politician that goes against the discipline of his church. A Baptist minister or a Methodist minister that goes for a, a politician that supports abortion up to the ninth month. Uh, a Baptist minister or a Methodist minister that supports LGBTQ when his discipline says no. We're supposed to love people. We're supposed to, we're supposed to repent. And we're supposed to reconcile. But they will support politicians that have done nothing but harm the African American community and go against their own religion. That's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. That's why I call it the Iron Triangle. Ever since Margaret Sanger started this project called the Negro Project, where they, she told them that her uh, plan was to destroy black people. She got black preachers to help her with it. Since slavery, Gunnar Murdahl wrote how the, the plantation owner used uh, itinerant black preachers to keep black people docile, to make them obey. This is the iPod version of the House Negroes back in the 1800s. It hadn't changed. And Jesus said, Jesus said, you know a tree by the fruit it bears. You cannot get good fruit from a rotten tree. Look at the fruit and tell me if we, if, if we are judging these people properly. They are giving us rotten fruit over and over again. The inner cities are a mess. Murder, rape, prison. And yet they strut around and actually be reelected. They should get on their knees and apologize for even running for office. Our ministers need to wake up and they need to pray to God and serve God, not man. That's what we're supposed to do. This book puts them on open display so the world can see, but it also tells us we are going to be held responsible and we have to wake up. We have to tell our people what's going on and this is why I wrote it. So that when I meet my maker, he'll say, you did what I told you. I can't make anybody do anything. All I can do is give you the information. And I'm saying, look at our community. Look at what is happening to us. If we do not make a change, they're going to kill us all. And you know what, Andre, they haven't pivoted in 50 years. Full speed ahead. I can't think of one change they've made in the last 50 years. Same thing. What did, what did Einstein say about that? And Sandy is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And they're going to do it again. Bad schools, give the teachers more money for bad education, uh, vote Democrat, straight ticket. Uh, now they're trying to legalize drugs in the, in, in the community. Do you hear about in D.C. they try to legalize prostitution? I have. Yeah. <laughs> God, man. How much farther low can you go? What would you say uh, to those who hear your comments, especially the, the comments you are making about um, people being loyal to a Democratic Party, mm -hmm. even though uh, the politicians are going against the principles of the faith, the principles of Christianity, if right. you will. I've heard people say that applies to the Republican Party, as I play devil's advocate sure. with you. They say that applies to the Republican Party and even the President of the United States. Of course. They talk about his uh, infidelities, if you will, right. or involvement with prostitution, if mm -hmm. you will. Uh, cronyism, hiring mm -hmm. his family, mm -hmm. and yet he gets the support of a lot of evangelicals and Christians. Right. So for those who say, hey, it happens on both sides in the Republican Party as well, right. and guys like Vince don't see that. Sure. Yeah, Vince sees it, but what Vince sees is this. The president's job is to protect our, our constitutional rights and use the federal government to do that. Right now, the freedom of religion is being assaulted by the Democrat Party. Our children can't pray in school. It ain't because of Donald Trump. It's because the Democratic Party won't let them. Our children are being aborted, and Trump's trying to stop it. And the Democrat Party is full speed ahead. Let's uh, take it to the ninth mark, up to, up to birth. The Democratic Party is the party that's trying to um, uh, 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 make drugs legal. It's not Trump. It's them. So when we look at what is happening in our community, and we judge the results of what's going on in the past 50 years and so how we've gone backward. We gotta say what's going on here? Why are we going backward? And it is not the Republican Party because they have no power in the black community. We have to look at the people that are running our community and that's how they deflect. They say, well, what about him? That's always a loser argument. What about him? What are you doing? Your job is to shepherd your flock. Your job is to be concerned about what you're doing. What does Jesus say about the splinter? 
You always worried about the splinter when you got the beam in your own eye? We are always looking at what other people are doing, and we're concerned about things like racism. And I'm not concerned about how another man views me. I'm concerned about whether or not God is satisfied with me. I'm pleased about serving him every day. They tell us to be concerned about serving them every day. So how does this man feel about me? I don't like Donald Trump, he's a racist. I don't care if Donald Trump's a racist. I don't think he is. But if he was, I wouldn't care. You know, you know why? I want him to do his job. I'm not concerned about whether or not a person likes me. I'm concerned about whether or not they do right by me. So if a guy comes to my house to fix my plumbing, I'm not going to be concerned about how he feels about it. I'm going to be concerned about whether he does the job well. And if he's mannerable to me. And if he's mannerable and he does his job well, I pay him, we shake hands, he goes. Other people will say, well, if he's a racist, I want to have nothing to do with it. I don't care how another man views me. I care about how God sees me. And when we get back to that, when we get back to that concept, like all our self-help books tell us, you can't live your life being concerned about how other people view you. You can't be concerned about it. It's one of the things that I've learned from white men. They did not care about how they were viewed by other people, all the other races. The slaves didn't like them, they didn't care. The Indians didn't like them, they did not care. They went and oh, they, they ruled the world because they didn't care about such things. We're at the bottom of every socioeconomic statistic in America because we're trying to make racists love us. Isn't that ridiculous? I don't care how racist feels about me. I only care if he puts his hands on me. And as long as he's not touching me, we don't have a problem. I don't care if he loves me. I love him. <laughs> I'm going to always love him. I'm going to always do right by him. But I'm not going to walk around my, in, in my life being concerned about how other men do me. That's a loser attitude also. You're watching Conversations, our television broadcast. I'm Andre Whitehead as I interview Mr. Vince Ellison with his new book, The Iron Triangle. He'll be right back after these very important messages, so make sure that you stay tuned. How can people obtain the book? The book is on Amazon.com. It's going to be in Barnes & Noble. Uh, it's on BarnesandNoble.com. Uh, the book is going to have a, a devastating impact on liberalism in America, I believe. I think it's going to wake up a lot of black and white people. I want white and black people to read this book because it's telling my white conservative brothers and sisters, you're okay. You're not the problem. You have nothing to apologize for. Everything that's wrong in the black community, we can fix in the black community. I'm a man. You're a man. I'm responsible for myself. I'm responsible for my family. Nobody else is. And as we walk around pointing fingers and complaining constantly about what other people are doing, we're losing out on everything. We have to change ourselves. And it starts with our leadership. They are leading us wrong. They are telling us to do things that are killing us. It's like a doctor telling you to eat pork and, and eat swine when you got high blood pressure. We have to look at the results. What do the results say? The results, we get a, we've gotten Fs for the last 50 years in leadership. I mean, I'm trying to think of something they've done well. And I can't come up with it. Some are getting themselves elected. They've done that very well and uh, making money for themselves. But as far as what they've done for the black community, no. Nah. I haven't seen anything they've done, but they've done well. This book exposes the traitors in our midst. It's the Iron Triangle. And the Iron Triangle, as I say it again, are most, not all, there are good black preachers out there, there are good civic organizers out there, and there are good black politicians out there. But look at their fruits. Look at their fruits, not just their work, the fruits of their labor. And if they're wanting, kick them out and find somebody else. Vince, how did you come to know the Lord? How, how did you become a Christian? I can't remember not knowing him. I was brought up in Tennessee. Uh, religion was just part of how we were reared. I remember when I grew up and discovered some people were atheists, I was like, what? <laughs> it's, it was just a part of my life, my whole life. And when I see people trying to live this life without him, you see the suicide epidemic now, you see the drug epidemic now, and you see that the left is trying their best to take God out of everything, and they see what it's doing, Andre. It's not like they don't see that. When they pulled prayer out of schools almost 60 years ago, 
We told them what was going to happen to America. When they started taking religion out of the public square and making it harder for people to pray and, and just get close to God. Uh, James, John Adams said our Constitution is designed for more than an upright people. It's wholly, wholly inadequate than the other. Our religion keeps us from fighting and killing one another. You take that away, you won't have enough bayonets to keep America in line. Look at the ghettos. How these places have succumbed, cesspools of violence and, 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 and drug addiction. And now we're seeing it spreading all over America. I pray that we have, a, that we have an awakening that Christianity or Islam, or whatever your religion is, I found a person that's really religious and really, really bows to their faith a good people regardless of what their faith is. Mm. So whether it be Islam, whether it be Judaism, whether it be Christianity, be a good one. And, 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 and worship your God, worship your religion. And we can get along with God. These people that are trying to put stumbling blocks in the way of all of us, we have to remove them and just cast them aside and go forward. As, before we exit, talk a little bit about your um, relationship with Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. How did that happen? Oh man, back in, um, let me see, 1995, I left the prison system. I started a nonprofit organization in Columbia, South Carolina. And uh, we went about going to the black politicians, trying to explain to them what we had learned about in the prison system, why black men were having such a difficult time in America. Well. I found that most black politicians understood it and weren't going to do anything about it. That was when my awakening happened. My book talks about this time. And I was like, wow, man, these cats, it's not like they don't know what's going on here. They know what's going on, and they don't want to stop it. Uh, Ralph Abernathy said the same thing in his book when the walls came tumbling down. He said he found out something curious, that they wanted black people on welfare. So Earl Muhammad came to me. They did something about me in the newspaper. And Earl Muhammad came and told me about the Million Man March. He said, look, man, we're going to try to change this black power structure. And we're going to do it by going to Washington, taking a million men to Washington. And we want to overturn the current black power structure and instill a new one that's about discipline, uh, not dependent on government. And that was right up my alley. So uh, I met with Brother Earl. We set up the Million Man March in uh, South Carolina. He and I worked together to get the thing organized. And we took about oh, 20, 30 buses up there. Mm and uh, went to the Million Man March and came back to South Carolina. So that's how I got hooked up with the nation back in the day. Then, to my, uh, <laughs> to, 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 uh, I, was, I was disappointed afterward. Uh, Earl, Earl and I, they, um, the minister, I think, I don't know who told them, but they told them they needed to start integrating with the current black leadership in South Carolina. And uh, me and Brother Earl talked about it, and I said, Brother Earl, I'm not going to be dealing with these guys. I dealt with them before, and they're the problem, they're not the solution. Earl had been given his orders, so we had to part ways. But we're still friends. I was always a Christian. I, um, I, I, um, I, I, I respect the, uh, Islam. I respect the Muslims. Um, I, I know their religion very well, but I, I never convert to Islam at all. Uh, once again, how can people uh, obtain copies of the book? Amazon.com. You can go to my website at irontrianglebook.com. You can get it from there. Barnesandnobles.com. And then the Barnes & Noble bookstores will be uh, uh, carrying it very, very soon.